Greetings, dear ones of Cryon, of Magnetic Service. I promised a parable. I'm going to give it a name. Woe and his backyard. Woe had a backyard, and all through his life, it was so important to him. You actually will remember it, perhaps, a. As you were small, and the things that were added to it, the things that stayed the same, the things perhaps that you counted on. The backyard, in this particular case, is your reality. It's you. It's how you think. It's how you do things. So clearly, the day that his father brought the tree, the whole reason for that was the wall. The tree was put in when Woe was small. In fact, he was was almost five, but he remembers it. And his dad said, "This is going to be your tree house." You're a little older. Well, we'll build it together, and you'll love it. And that's what happened. The tree house, dear ones, represents the childhood. His father found two oral oil barrels, like almost like trash cans, that, that were open at the top, and he. Down and put them next to the tree in order to support a part of the treehouse. Now, what's significant in the barrels was that through the years that followed, even into Woe's adulthood, the barrel stayed in the same place. And this was because they were ultimately functional, even after the treehouse was gone. Interesting. Some of the neighbors noticed that. Is he ever going to move those barrels? Well, he said, "I don't think so." The barrels don't move, dear ones. In your backyard, you got barrels. You never move them. You can't move them. You would never think of moving them because of the core truth. Question: Did you put them there, or did you die? That is a metaphor, but you get it. I know you get it. What important person in your life put those things there that became ultimately stationary that you won't move from and you'll never move from, but you use it all the time because it works and it works. That tree, it continued to grow. His father and his friends built him the playhouse. The playhouse also representing the inner child. The backyard then becomes your childhood, your life, your belief system, and the tree. Well, it keeps growing, keeps growing, and. That's what you hang on to, because there are certain things in life that you have to know are solid. Woe would go into the backyard when he was an adult and grab his drink and his straw, and he'd sit there in his chair and he'd say, "This is good." Then he reflected, "Well, yes, of course, there's the negative things." And he started listing some of those, and he said, I "I'll get through them because I'm I'm a balanced person." But about the rats, and he says, "We have rats, and this, and of course they're not from my yard. They come from the neighbors." He says, "We have rats, and this, and of course they're not from my yard. They come from the neighbors' yard." 
Now, I'm not going to tell the neighbor he has rats that are getting into my yard because I love my neighbor. There are certain things you don't tell your neighbor and your friends, and you don't tell them about your rats, you don't tell them how to raise their children, you just love them. You just love them. You just love them. You just love them. So I'll deal with the rats as I can. It's a negative thing. They come, they go, I don't know how. They come over the fence. Now the rats are, of course, the challenges in life. They're the things that you look at and you don't want to deal with, but you have to deal with and you deal with them. Sometimes in some backyards there are just too many rats. And that's when you go into dysfunction and stress, and that's when you go into poor health. And then there was the snake. The snake was always the fear of something you couldn't fix. It was the fear of death, disease, it was whatever it is that's beyond a rat. And Walt said, I deal with these things. I know how to deal with these things. I'm okay. Tell a certain date. Tell a certain date. And then came the earthquake. It rumbled and it swayed and he felt that tree crack. Oh boy, was there some changes. Tree's a little different, this playhouse is a little different. I think it's all right. Yeah, until the inspectors came. Now the inspectors can be almost anything in your life, but they do represent authority. Sometimes they don't represent authority, they represent epiphany. Interesting, isn't it? Anything that would ask you to change your backyard, but in this particular case, he knew he had to because the earthquake had happened. Woe was an old soul. Woe had a consciousness that was ready to evolve. And his earthquake changed his backyard. The authorities came and they said, the tree, let's talk about the tree. And Woe said, no, if you're going to tell me the tree has to go, you leave. You have a tree that you elected to plant outside the forest. That means you are responsible for what Gaia would normally do. The tree needs to be pruned. You should have pruned it all along. Pruning that tree is that thing that you hold on to for strength. Pruning the tree actually might mean, depending upon who's here and who's listening, that you have to reevaluate your reality on a regular basis. Most people have it. Most humans have it. The tree is the tree. Well, the tree is the tree. It's a beautiful tree. We wouldn't hurt it. We're just going to prune it so it can grow better. When it was finished, Woe came back. Didn't know what he was going to see. Walked in the backyard, fell to his knees, sobbing. They pruned it, they killed it. They, they hadn't killed it, of course, but Woe had never seen a tree pruned like that before. There was no more canopy, there were no more branches. Funnily enough, through his lifetime, he had noticed a lot more stinging bugs. Now there were none. He didn't realize his tree was dropping them on him. And what's this? He's going to have to get sunglasses. There's too much light. There's no more shade. And the inspector says, don't worry, there will be very soon. It doesn't take long. They grow back quickly, believe me. Who well, didn't like what he saw at all? He understood what they were saying, but, oh, but his tree? Oh, it was gone. The tree that he knew was gone. The shade, all the branches, it had been cut back to nothing. I hope you didn't mind, Woe, but in the process of pruning the tree, we had to move the barrels. They moved the barrels. Did you know that you had a nest of snakes in there? What? Yes, they were in the barrels all the time. How many, did you ever look under those things? How many years have they been there? For life. He never had looked under there. That's where the snakes were coming from. Look at the metaphor, dear ones. The 
things that you would never touch, the things that were absolute true to you, the things that your father put there. If you had moved them, it would be almost a travesty. It would be to his memory. You just don't move those things that are so important to you. That perhaps your pastor and your priest told you, or your mom or your dad, or that, that professor that you love so much, and those barrels don't move because that's a tribute to their memory. And under the barrel were the things. Did you know that you had a nest of snakes in there? What? Yes, they were in the barrels all the time. How many, did you ever look under those things? How many years have they been there? Well, he realized for life, he never had looked under there. That's where the snakes were coming from. Look at the metaphor, dear one. The things that you would never touch, the things that were absolute true to you, the things that your father put there, if you had moved them, it would be almost a travesty. It would be to his memory. You just don't move those things that are so important to you. That perhaps your pastor and your priest told you, or your mom or your dad, or that, that professor that you love so much, and those barrels don't move because that's a tribute to their memory. And under the barrel were the snakes. Because they were never moved. I think you get it. I think you get it. Sorry to tell you this, but that playhouse, I gotta get rid of it. What was numbed at this time? He says, go ahead, take the playhouse. The inspector said, you know, it's a little harder than we thought to take that playhouse. And he says, why? And he says, well, because you had a rat's nest in there. They were coming from your playhouse. Well, how often did you go in that playhouse? Not since I was a child. It was just in there. It's just, it's just a memory. I want you to look at this, dear ones. There are those of you who still have the memory of the playhouse and you will not go to that inner child because you've been told by someone that if you're going to be an adult, you act as an adult. And I'm telling you, dear ones, listen, listen, listen. If you will visit your inner child, it'll save your life. Your inner child is who you are. And he never went in there. Woe was an old soul and he was balanced. But as he ignored these things and just let them be, in came the rats and in came the snakes and all the other things. Not too long afterwards, Woe found himself in the backyard in his lawn chair, sipping his drink with a straw with sunglasses on. Noticed something right away. Color. The flowers were coming. And they had not been there all his life. He realized that all things were okay. The tree, he could still grab it and hang on to. It was still his support. But it could have new branches, different kinds of shade. The playhouse in his in his own mind and the and, and the tree house was still there. He could remember it. He could laugh and he could squeal. The barrels? <laughs> he had them removed. Who wants old barrels in your backyard? That's the parable. How's your backyard, dear one? How many of you felt the earthquake? Now let me give you another secret. The earthquake's different for all of you. It was yesterday, it was 2012, perhaps it's tomorrow. Something that shakes the foundation of your belief, and it doesn't have to be negative. You could have an epiphany of saying, I recognize my backyard and it's not pretty. I don't want an earthquake, I just want a new tree. This would be the wise old soul who says you don't have to take me to zero for me to get it. And there will be others who will have issues in their life that will take them to a place where you have to face things you didn't want to face. And you'll cry out to God and that, what have you done? What's wrong? What have I done? Why am I here? Why is this happening to me? I'm speaking to somebody in the audience. 
I'm a good person. I'm a good old soul. I believe in these things. Why is this happening to me? And the answer is because you're stubborn and you know it. And you're going to go through this and you're going to come out the other side with light. And the tree will be pruned, but it won't kill it. This is how you are. Every human, absolutely elegantly different in every single, every single way. But all of you have a backyard. And the changes that may have to occur in your consciousness and even what you believe when I ask, who are you? When you start to analyze who you might be on this planet and what you might be here for. And the answers are beautiful. There's majesty in the answers. There's magnificence in all of the realizations when you start answering one by one. This is the message of Cryon and has been for 30 years. We just tell it different every time. And so it is.